You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. We are back here for Jake's Bait and Tackle's monthly review of tackle tips, tricks, and what's been biting out on the water around near us. Can I please get a mic check for all the lovely people in the audience that are listening in? And uh, while we get that mic check of what I need to adjust, we have a lovely smorgasbord of baits to be talking about today and also a special guest, which I think we really need to get into, right, Jared? Yeah. So if you would like to, uh, MC this guy in. So uh, Doc Galen Hefcoat here, known, better known as Doc, um, he fishes it all. He'll fish uh, river, lakes, uh, grew up in the south, Tennessee, came north, and uh, loves fishing. Just passionate about fishing, getting closer to retirement. He's still got a little bit of time, but he's, he's yeah. collecting all his stuff to make sure he has all his gear and tackle ready so when he does retire... It's and, and you're prepping now for that, just like getting out go. on the water. Just got back from the Susquehanna River. Yeah, I want to thank y'all for inviting me to uh, be on the show tonight. I'm uh, really looking forward to it because I have an addiction to fishing and fishing, collecting lures and this and that. So it'll be a fun night. Well, I have a lot of lot of fun with this. We appreciate you coming. So let's kind of just get this uh, shindig started. So we got some, uh, we already got some nice little chatty chats. Let's see what we got here. Right, let's go with Curtis Cole, my man, my fishing partner. Sup, big dog. How you doing, Kurt? Uh, we got David Williams. Good evening, guys. How you guys doing there? And they got William Barnes. Audio sounds good. Perfection. So guys, we are going to be doing a call in part of the show here. I have Jerry rigged this setup to hopefully make this work next live stream from now on. Just this is a little uh, PSA. The last Monday of every month, we'll be at Jake's Bait and Tackle to do a live stream to talk about the baits and also what's going on for the next month. So the last Monday in October, we'll be back here. and We're going to be talking about November stuff, November baits as well. In that live stream, thanks to all of our Patreon supporters, we'll have enough money that I will have bought better audio equipment. So this won't be an issue going forward. We'll be able to have like six people on a call together. We'll be able to do the live stream. It's great. But anyway, with that said, at the end of the show, I'm going to put up a 1-800 number. People who call in automatically win a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Um, but so just without further ado, we're going to be talking about baits, right, guys? Like what yeah. works this time of year? And I thought what we could do, which would be a lot of fun, is let's start with the rivers and let's just go from Doc, Jared to myself, and then we can rotate through one bait each and uh, we'll get this ball going. Sound good? So, yeah, without further ado, sir. All right, great. Uh, I was just fishing the Susquehanna River this past weekend, had a, a real good, uh, real good trip up there on Friday and Saturday. And I just thought I'd kind of highlight some of the baits that, uh, you know, I, I was fishing with up there and, and uh, things that I think at this time of year is uh, uh, important in reference to your fishing. And uh, I'll just start off with square bill. I'll, I'll throw a square bill in there first because really was on a good square bill bite uh, uh, this past week weekend. And, you know, I like to keep things simple and I'll just show you just a, a, a a handful of a few square bills here that you could get by on uh without you know having one of a hundred different colors but i think uh you know first of all you look at what's going on in the river uh right now you got the cool night starting to develop you got this transition starting and i noticed when i went to put my boat in uh friday morning it was uh, still dark and it had my headlamp on and i was looking down the river and i knew i seen you know just tons of small three two and a half three inch men is jumping and what was what was right in after him was bass just feeding feeding up a storm right on the the bank so you know so i think uh knowing that you know it uh, the, the we said well we uh, wanted to fish with small of course square bill baits and uh and i, I like uh you know basically if you got uh four or five different colors you can take for example you can take you need a crawdad color uh of what i found was uh good it's uh that's a it just a brown crawdad uh, orange belly all different brands you uh make this so this here happens to be a made by jackal uh, that's a that's a must type color that you'll need in your square bill this time of year uh the this past weekend the river was muddy so uh i'll tell you something it worked real well and that was of course the the red the red bait i don't know if you can see this uh but the red, the red color, that's a, also a jackal in a, a small square bill. And that really, that really caught a lot of fish. Uh, so, you know, that's, a, I think that's important a color to have for your arsenal. 
uh, without, like I said, uh, going into having a hundred different colors. And of course you need a chartreuse, something chartreuse. Uh, and this here happened to be a bomber. This is a bomber A and I caught several fish on this bomber A square bill that uh, tended to work very good. So once again, in that muddy water that really came into play, uh, so that, that was good. And just a uh, couple other things, buddy of mine that was fishing with me, Kenny Gano, he was throwing a, a Spro, um, uh, RK crawler, uh, 50 series. And this bait runs forward to, you know, roughly four to uh, eight foot deep, which is really deep for something like the Susquehanna river. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he was working this thing slow and just bumping the rocks and, 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 and just kind of really dragging it. And man, he was wearing them out with this uh, uh, Spro rock crawler. And this is also a very good lure up, up north, up at Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, uh, fishing for smallmouth. That's, a, that's one uh, that, that works real good. And, <clears throat> and then just a couple others here, uh, cotton cordell, uh, you got a, uh, or well, a cotton cordell, solid white. And this here, I think is a, uh, say other, not the bomber, but, uh, um, oh, shoot. No, it's Not the, cotton uh, cordell. What about? Anyway, bottom line is it's solid black and solid white, and you can take those colors and just about that really is all you could do it all right there with those bandit. square bills right there. Bandit, bandit. yeah, it's a black bandit, oh, yeah. a black bandit, and then a white cotton cordell. And those handful of colors right there is really would cover just about anything, uh, now at least in the river. Uh, at this time, uh, uh, this time of year. So that's me on the square good. bills. So I didn't expect it was an absolute clinic. So I feel like underprepared, like the kid yeah. that didn't study for a test. No, he's, he's the guest here and he's got him lined up and in, in all like a variety, different colors. Uh, do you pay attention to wobble, like tight wobble? Oh, sure. Versus hunting? Yeah, absolutely. And right now, this time of year, I don't mind the, the wide wobble. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, you know, early in this early or earlier in the spring, you know, or in the winter, you're going to want a, a, a colder weather. You're going to want a tighter wobble. Mm -hmm. So then, therefore, you're either you're more pointed, mm -hmm. you know, a smaller bill, more pointed would be work good, mm -hmm. you know, at, at that point. It's good stuff. But, but right now, I think, you know, this here mm -hmm. and that and that, those are good size baits to use right now, especially in the rivers. You're up. I'm going to go with the, uh, the Z-Man Willow Vibe um this thing right here is the, the z-man um like your chatterbait um chatterbait jackhammer uh without without the skirt okay so this is going to give you a little more subtle lower profile look it doesn't have the skirt uh put yourself a three inch four inch uh paddle tail on the back of this thing the camera angle right here and it's got a small diamond shaped blade on the front. Uh, it's going to give less of a vibration than, than the traditional jackhammer. But what I like about this, again, it's subtle, it's small, it doesn't have the big skirt profile. It's going to give you a vibration, but not a lot of vibration. So it's going to be a subtle vibration. And I think this time of year on the river, you throw something like this. Doc's going to be call, talking about a scrounger head later. Very similar to the scrounger head, uh, but Z Man is a good product. Uh, Willow Vibe. Put that up here for you to see. Willow Vibe right here, paired up with any paddle tail that you like, you prefer. Um, you could probably even put a crawl on the back. I know you like doing that on your jackhammer. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, you know, just experiment with your trailer, uh, but it's subtle. Uh, they're seeing a lot of jackhammers, a lot of skirted baits. Uh, something that's a little more subtle sometimes will, will trigger that strike. No, I think that's fantastic. Those are really good baits. I mean, I think it also, guys, it really depends on what river you're on. I think what's so interesting with all the conversations I've been blessed to have with this is the Susquehanna does fish differently just when it comes to the forage species. Mm -hmm. When I'm on the upper Potomac, it's a lot smaller bait profile that you have to do to get bit versus the guys that are winning the Susquehanna. They are throwing more almost like largemouth size mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. like bigger shad yeah. profile, bigger, like you can catch them on glide baits. People are saying that yeah. I have not had success yet, or maybe I'm doing it wrong on a glide bait on the Potomac for smallmouth, but the Susky you can. So a hundred percent, make sure you understand that, you know, if you're fishing the Susky, you could probably get away with a little bit bigger profile versus if you were on the Shenandoah or the upper Potomac. With that said, I'm going almost pure Shenandoah upper Potomac here. And then this also gets into a question, a lovely guest slash as I tear up the whole backside, talked about with a BFS setup, 
And so what this is, and I'll be showing this off to a smaller camera in a minute. So part of my BFS setup, one of the best things I've come up with is you're taking this Fukushima head. Um, and I know it's not called Fukushima. Just Okushira. chat. Yeah, Okashira. Okushira. Guys, I mean, you know, I, I say Baku and, and it's bang. So we get this. It's power. <laughs> right. You're going to. Yes. Tom's yeah. dictionary. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if you guys could please make this head in something bigger than a one eighth, yes. I would love yes. you to death. Yes. Like a three up to three eighth would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Take this thing and then you're going to put a gulp minnow on the back of it and then put a dab of super glue on this thing. Just a dab of it. And for some reason, you will outfish everyone else around you. If you're fishing grass clumps, if you're fishing a riffle or just any kind of rock you're going to get bit fantastically with this. And it's a lot more weedless than a regular spy bait. If you guys know, they've been following the show. Uh, my lovely wife, who's part of the intro, she started to use spy baits more often because it's basically a swim bait with treble hooks mm -hmm. and you can't go wrong with that. Just keep it above the bottom and you're going to just lean right into them. What I did find out with this type of swim bait is because it's basically what it is. And I've watched them on live scope. They shark it. They will get up behind that thing and watch it for a minute and they'll hit the tail and then they'll grab the rest of it. Sometimes they'll take the whole thing at once, but a lot of times it's a delayed thing where they're going to push it for a second and then swallow the whole thing, which is like a winter time swim bait bite. So when you feel that initial hit real a little bit longer and then then give it to them really hard. I like to pair this up with my BFS setup. I'll go eight pound fluorocarbon line. This is sniper sunline. And then this is on a medium light Phoenix, which is my BFS setup. Um, and then I'm going to go with a Daiwa reel. This is the smaller like 100 Daiwa series reel. It doesn't matter because I don't really need a drag setup with this with this setup in general. If I am getting into a situation where they're going to be pulling drag, I'll switch to the Shimano Coriato BFS reel, which does have a really good drag system uh, in place. And again, the comment section is always good at letting me know about my vocabulary mishaps. So that is one of the baits that I feel like you can throw this time of year and you're going to get bait no matter what the pressure is around you. And we got some fantastic uh we have some fantastic comments already. Let's get let's get into these right here. Uh, I think you know this guy. Yeah, O'Brien hit Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry. Spark Shad. So he oh, is yeah, saying Spark Shad. Shad would be my choice. Spark Shad is also very good. The problem is that so this is a fun philosophical conversation we get into. Let's go down the rabbit hole some. So here's the problem with Spark Shad is the paddle tail. I feel like they turn off the paddle tail first. When you take a fluke style bake, a bait, mm -hmm. or a gulp style where it's just a no-nothing presentation it's harder for them to get turned off of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think 100% go with a boot tail or paddle tail, I'm sorry, a spark, something like that. However, if you're not getting bit in a short order, especially in a river system, this time of year, you shouldn't be making, I think, 600 casts at the same place. Because mm -hmm. now that I've had forward-facing sonar on my boat and I can look at this and like they're there, two or three casts, switch it up. Mm -hmm. Go to a fluke-style bait where it has no action at all. And with that, with that uh, Okashira head, it just makes that nice little shimmy. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need. It's just a little bit more subtle. I gotta show you real quick to pull this. Oh up yeah, here. Pull this, up. this is and he's saying river. I know this, but Smith Mountain Lake. Um, this is the potential of what he just showed you um, on this phone. You go this camera. Uh, yeah, that camera is not up right now, but I'll do you one better. Do 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 do. We sharing eventually. We sharing. There we go. Let's do this. Boom. There's Doc. And then, uh, yeah, that, I'll was on the Okashira. that was on the Okashira there. But talk, Doc, you want to talk to that one? Oh, yeah, yeah this, is a, this is a, a small mouth. I call it uh, Friday. It was uh, five, five pounds, six ounces. Uh, caught that on a tube, um, just a, basically a, a green pumpkin style tube, uh, fishing with a quarter ounce jig head, fishing in very, very, very swift current. Uh, and basically it was, you know, just bouncing off the bottom, uh, and boom, there, there he was. And mm -hmm. that was a really, really nice fish. And th this just goes to show you, look, look at the belly on that small mouth. I mean, they are feeding right now. They mm -hmm. are starting the feed bag on is mm -hmm. starting and you can tell it by that belly on that fish. I mean, it looked like a pre, you know, a, a pre-spawn yeah. fish. No, I mean, I mean, they're out. just, what is know, the water temperature like right now? It was, uh, I think it was still, I believe it was in the, it's in the 70s, I think, low 70s, mm -hmm. I believe, the best I remember. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention, but I think it was in the low 70s. But, uh, and so we're going to answer this next question that we're going to have Jared's, uh, we're going to show off Jared's photo, which is, okay, we got we got Gregory uh, Sanner, uh, nice catch at the Susquehy for Jeff Miller, 100%, and then we got Looney in the, in the house. Those Willow vibes are awesome on the Susquehy for smallmouth. 
Lonnie. Lonnie? Lonnie. I need my glasses. I do also need my glasses. It is hard when you get old when you need glasses, though. <laughs> well, but actually, really, I do have my glasses over there. Yeah, that was the joke. <laughs> I am blind. I'm actually really blind. No. But anyway, yeah. So uh, let's go. I'll go in reverse. Uh, actually, go back to Doc. You want to go back to Doc? Yeah. So what do you got next? All right. Uh, next, I think this time of year is uh, something that's it's going to be, of course, important. Kind of go along with the uh, the, the square bills is, is your uh, lipless crank uh, lipless pouch. crank baits, and once again they Side are pouch. they are they are really uh, go to baits. I mean, you know, basically you got your rattle trap style bait, which is the old uh, what Lewis uh, Bill Lewis, Bill Lewis uh, bait. You know, uh, once again, I'm try to keep it simple. You got a you got a, a red. A red color there uh, it's important to have that color uh, especially for the muddy water uh, or dark or more stained water and uh, this here is a, a rip and wrap uh rapala uh, it's in a chartreuse Bang. color that's I caught, I caught quite a few fish this past weekend on that that actual that particular bait they were really uh, really really on that uh, that lipless crankbait and of course, another couple of good ones that uh, work very well on the Susquehanna, uh, for sure, would be uh, there's the uh, Aruka Shad by Spro, and uh, yeah, it's a couple of different colors I keep of that. I keep I have a gold one that I use, and that there is more of a translucent for when the water is really clear. That's just a good, just a that's a really good bait to use, especially you get on them on the ledges and stuff and let that thing just, you know, drop down in the ledges. And, and, and then if I make, can I get that Aruka shad and that other one? I just want to shake this in front of the mic yeah. just so people can hear. Cause this is the big thing I think with lipless baits. So, yeah. uh, so you got this one. So yeah. I want you guys to hear this real quick. Mm -hmm. Those, those beads are very fine compared to okay, see that one here. You hear the difference yeah. right there. Yeah. And really it is that audio change. Yep. It just, it can, oof. and that can a lot of times make the difference. And this is just another Aruka shad in the gold color. But, but you already, that's a Ruka shad and I can already tell, and this is where I think with baits that co with vibration, I, even though they're all manufactured the same, you can hear guys, these are two of the same bait. Yeah. There's a sound difference right there. And listen to this, this, this rip and wrap by Rapala. Yeah. It's a deeper sound. Yeah. It's a deeper thud. And that's why I think going to flea markets are so cool too, where if mm -hmm. you get yeah. some of these that are no longer made, like the old balsa exactly. baits, they have, they have their own almost like, how would you say Carly, like flavor to them? Sound flavor? flavor, yeah, sound flavor, okay. on the last spirits and ghost stories. You were very smashed. Um, let's see, we got a new we got a new comment here from Thomas. Okay, uh, Jared, you read that. <laughs> Jacka, Jacka, rhythm wag. Jackal. Said, Jackal. She's probably just trying to say jackal, but yeah, jackal. look off the L. Rhythm wag for blades, jig, hover rig, strolling in the smallest on BFS for tradition fluke style that's almost a sentence bud you almost beat me yeah. into it luke's another good choice no the hover rig is extremely good that's another japanese we, technique that's we, coming over here y'all cut we carry hover hover rigs oh uh, we'll have to check with jennifer i know uh, she's running in the back right now to yeah. pull out some japanese stuff that we have um over there. Right. yeah the hover rig is interesting to me it seems like a very I don't know how well it works in the river systems compared to a lake. Yeah. Can you talk to that at all? Like, is it more well, lakes? I think the thing is the, with the, the, the hover rig is it's uh, it's very light, I mean, which is okay on the river, but it's it's definitely a light bait. And uh, I really hadn't uh, used it that much on the river. I have used it in the lakes, uh, but it's you know basically you got a nail weight with a hook, essentially a hook on it, and uh, so it's uh, just don't have a lot of experience on the river with it. Uh, I think the the idea of it's very very uh, is is really. Oh, you uh, want to announce what it is? Oh, that's interesting. The mic. I can do it there too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah actually, that works. Jenny, just hold it up to the camera. That works fantastic, actually. Yeah, there it is. Rhythm wag. Yeah. It wags. It's the rhythm. And he's talking about the uh, that on a uh, gotcha. hover rig. Yeah. Hover rig. Yeah. yeah I could see that would be a. I could. Uh, I could see well, that would be. A great and the other big thing is the hairy dice big. too, or whatever. I guess it's called hairy yeah. dice. That's sad almost. That's actually. I believe it's made by Desk, but it was crazy for a while there. That was selling on eBay for like hundred dollars a pack when it was like real hot because you couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy how much stuff is. Is that a, the name of the dealer? Or is that the name of the brand? 
key crack would be manufacturer, I'm pretty sure. And then we or, got yeah. we got Thomas again with a nice little question here, which is it smashes on the reservoir. If they have the the rhythm wag, I'll be calling tomorrow. They 100 yeah. percent do, but you better be calling in fast and then drop fish in the DMV, uh, please. Just because, honestly, I don't have anything to give away. Um, uh, we got we got Connor again. Uh, is the hover rig more for like drop shot style fishing? More finesse, I would say. Though, Suspended. Suspended. Yeah, finesse. I think basically, yeah, it's a, it's a, a suspension type bait, or I guess you could do the, uh, you know, with the, yeah, the, the cast and tight line or whatever, you know. The, yeah. uh, it's a different look. Yeah. It's a different look of the yeah, same it's, thing. It's, it really is. Uh, like I said, I've, I've fished some, but I'm not that burst in at this point. But I do have I, I, something I do want to start using a little more, especially in the lake mm -hmm. reservoir. And, and, I, and I feel like with a lot of those things, like with the hover rig, the spy bait, the jerk bait, uh, let's go with the spy bait and the hover rig because I feel like they're kind of in the same class of what you're trying to, what they were initially created right. to do. I think they really do work the best when you have high pressure because the fish are getting that different look. That's if, exactly right. Because if, right. if you're going to a pond that's never seen anything before, mm -hmm. you can throw a chatterbait and have a great time. You don't have to get super mm -hmm. finessey. And I think the same thing with like the hover or the spy bait. I've had bad days with a spy bait when they're just absolutely smashing a jerk because they haven't seen one all year. Right. I think it's the same thing with the hover rig. Like if it's super pressured, start going down the list of finesse mm -hmm. baits. But I wouldn't suggest if you have time, of course, don't start super finesse mm -hmm. if you don't think that's mm -hmm. going to be the deal. Mm -hmm. um, no, that that's really good stuff. And I think we have actually you're next, correct? Yes, I, you know, and we, it's interesting. There's a lot of new stuff coming out and, and there's new cells and it's good. But sometimes, too, I think going back old school, uh, old stuff still works, too. Ooh, yeah. But when you're talking about the river, the tiny torpedo right here in any color um, or the regular size torpedo, but it's got a little prop on the back. It's going to be top water. Carly. Um, it oh, is, you know, this thing can be fished uh, with a spinning reel. Uh, you can work it slow, steady retrieve. You can pop it. You can pause it. Uh, that tiny torpedo has caught three and four pound, you know, smallmouth on the river. And again, it's a subtle, subtle little bait. Uh, very good, Carly. She does good. Yeah. Uh, She's been on the prices right. I was using that bait 50 years ago. 50 years, 50 ago, years ago, and it still works today. Yes, and so don't forget, as with all this new stuff coming out, don't forget some of the oldies but goodies, mm -hmm. and they will put fish in the boat. Especially, again, when you're looking for something subtle, uh, when the reaction bite is not on and you're looking for something a little more subtle, um, uh, tiny torpedo is a good way to go. Absolutely. My turn. Okay. So, uh, Carly and I have actually won a lot of money with this setup here. I've explained this a couple of times, but I've, uh, I keep on talking about it. You're going to take a kite, uh, the Kitech head. You're going to take the Kitech head right here. And this is guys, I've mastered this setup to a T it's taken me all summer to figure this out. This is the best ball head tungsten jig head that you can get. That has a little bit of a weed guard. This is a one fourth ounce. That's what you're going to go mm -hmm. with. And then you're going to put a tiny tube or the the uh, the TRD micro or the the panfish version of the Ned rig on there. You're going to go with a little bit of what I call Baku or Bang or whatever crayfish scent that you like. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pair that with this was the hardest thing to find out. Honestly, I started with an ultralight and I couldn't on long cast get the hook to work. I went to a medium. And I started to pull the hook away from them. So you want a medium light rod. You're going to go with your regular braid. I like 12 pound test braid. That's perfectly fine. And then I went to five pound leader material. The Sunline shooter is what I use in the leader material that they have. I'm going to tie about 10 feet of leader material to this. I'm going to cast upstream and I'm going to slowly work that thing back. For some reason on the upper Potomac right now, they're not keying on big baits. I don't know why at all. They want something super small. Every tournament, I have either won big fish or I've lost big fish by ounces throwing this super tiny little Ned rig. I, and it's stupid. I don't know why. Carly, I mean, you can Whoops. attest to all the big ones that we're catching right now, correct? When we're out there. It doesn't make sense, but it's always back in the throat. Well, if you heard Doc, the very first thing you said when on the Susquehanna when you put on, you were catch, you saw, mm -hmm. you saw a bait fish that was was small, and yeah. so when you pay two, attention two, to that, like two or three inch that yeah. size right now, regardless of river or lake, that's what you're, right. that's what mm -hmm. they're, and so that's predominant. Match the hatch. That's I think that's why. Yep. No, hundred percent. And and one thing I'll speak to is people really hate going with super light gear when you're fishing non when it's not super heavy cover like the susquehanna maybe you're you're dead center you're dead nuts of the river it's a little bit it's a little bit deeper it's lake st Clair, uh big slack on the upper potomac or a big portion of the Shenandoah river the drag is your friend 
you're going to set the hook. And this is what I, I learned this summer. It might not be always, but this is what I've learned so far. When you set the hook and it shoots off like a pod rocket, it's about six inches long. When you set the hook and it wallows for just a split second, it's usually the bigger ones for some reason. I don't know why that is, yeah, but sure. it's so far this year. So what I always do is I tighten that drag a little bit tighter. So on the hook set, it'll just spew out a little bit. Then if when, as soon as I set the hook, if it wallows for a second, I dial back the drag a little bit and I just let him go. And that'll keep him from jumping a lot of times. We've only had Carly, like what, I think we've had like one jump all year that I've hooked, one of the bigger ones. And that's because unlike no offense big on you here if you pull straight up to the sky with these things they're gonna want to shoot up to the now you help give them assist by taking them you know 80 feet over your head but generally speaking the harder you pull on them the more you're going to get them to come up if you're throwing i think a treble hook or something like that the more they come out of the water the higher probability you have them coming unhooked set the hook and dial back your drag and just let them play off the drag until they get tired and then you can get them to the boat without hopefully them them losing yeah Good tip. But use the drag as your friend on this lighter you, stuff. You have to. You, you absolutely have to. Yeah. yeah. And I get it. You see him jump and you think like, if I could just winch him to the net, but those small mouths are so hot this time of year. You don't want them near the net when they're jumping and being all, all right. Looney Tunes on you. Right. But yeah, that that's my, my power setup right now. Oh my goodness. We have so many questions here. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to say this. Nicole. Nicholas. Nicholas. Okay. No, I was completely wrong. Nicholas Mayers. Uh, can you guys put me a basket together for the Upper Potomac? I am literally getting ready to place an order at Jake's. Just don't have time to make it out during the week. She has. So my wife does have a lovely basket. Uh, it's more color accessory stuff. But uh, it's, not what you, it's not what you need, but you'll look good buying it. Um, absolutely, boss. Uh, actually, yeah. Give give uh, Jake's a uh, call tomorrow. Uh, just drop your name, and I'll I'll screenshot the chat. That way, we all kind of know what you're talking about. Uh, we got we got this big dog back in the house. They are not keying in on big baits in the Shenandoah either. But the colder weather should make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's interesting too to me. Is like, it's I I talked to my 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 other co angler partner on the Upper Potomac series, which is it's so funny how with a small mouth compared to a large mouth, they'll key in the stupid smallest stuff. Mm -hmm. These small jerk baits and these rooster tails, we could catch a state record smallmouth. Yeah. No way in hell you're probably going to catch a state record largemouth on this this little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, those big it's such a big fish will key on such a little thing. It's just it blows my mind all the time. Um, let's see, we got any more here? We got we got William again. Uh, lots of small forage mm -hmm. fish this time of year on the Potomac, and I think it's also with the helgramites, the bugs. Um, crap, what's the bug that's, that's starting to lay right now? Uh, it's the mayflies. Is it the mayflies? Yeah. Lantern flies? Lantern fly. No, they might the, be yeah, well, they're the not on the water. Hugger mite, the uh, mite, uh, which is a Dobson fly, I think. But yeah, uh, yeah. But to your point, yeah, different fly hatches. Yeah. But just again, tiny baits. Like yep. it's all tiny baits. Old school baits are making a comeback because anglers have gotten away from them and the fish are not accustomed to seeing them. A hundred percent. I mean, what what is right. that new jackal bait that's coming out that looks basically like a jitterbug on steroids? Drip fry for the next the top next comment up above that Thomas again. Oh, here, that's, oh, that's actually my yeah, it might, might be, be it. it. So we got it here from Thomas. Uh, look up the jackal drift from Biowa Rigs. A hundred percent, we're going to be looking that up on yeah. more computers that I'll eventually have, guys. We're, we're it's coming, cool. it's coming. Um, we got Brian Henry. They're going to get back to our little rotation here. Uh, question for Doc. I have never fished Susquehanna, but is drop shot an option on the river? Uh, it, sure, it would be, uh, but I really don't don't really drop shot there because uh, basically the the current and the rocks and you know you're in a mm -hmm. that type of situation. Of course, I guess you know if you got in a wintering hole or something like that, the right time of year, drop shot would be a definitely an alternative. I'm say mm -hmm. you can't do it. I just don't have a lot of experience drop shotting on that river. But you're pushing I do drop up. shot. I mean, you know, you yeah. go up north or go up to you know St. Lawrence you need or depth. Lake Erie or you know, Lake Ontario, definitely, you know, you and know that I, mean, river I, I enjoy current. drop shot. I mean, yeah. I, like, I do like uh, fish, uh, using that method or fishing that method, but uh, I really don't have a lot of but experience. But the current on, on the Susquehanna, the current yeah, is, it's, is stronger. It's like it's wider, stronger, just pushing more. It would definitely be harder. Yeah, usually for when, I, when I'm able to fish Susquehanna and I feel, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not going up there to tear up my boat. So I got to make sure that the levels where I really feel confident that I'm, i would be happy you know relatively safe uh you know i usually like the water to be at least four and a half i mean you can 
there's people fishing a whole lot lower than that. Now, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. But for me, I mean, I like a lot of times I'm in, I end up going by myself, or which is not a great idea in the first place. But I like to make sure that I got plenty of, you know, water that I can run relatively safe. Now, I, I usually feel pretty safe on the Susquehanna at, at four and a half foot foot on up to, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, or if I've have actually fished it around four. You got to pick and choose, but that's uh, you know that's the thing. And when it's up around five foot, you know it's usually five or five and a half foot or whatever six. It's usually really ripped. I mean, you got some you got some good current ripping mm -hmm. through there, so you have to. It would kind of limit uh, that type of fish. Now I know some of the guides. I'm sure they got plenty of experience probably using drop shots but not not me i think that's a good question about current i know this is a little bit of a side tangent but i do think like when current starts ripping the nice thing is it does compress them into specific areas where you can target them mm -hmm. do you think in a general rough sense what current at what rpm or and i know that's not the right nautical term but is that current so low that it doesn't play as much of a factor on the rivers like right now you know on the shenandoah there's like a water issue where it's not oh flowing gosh. at all does that really throw them for a loop when the current gets so lax that it doesn't affect them as much? I think it slows the fishing down. I mean, I, I, yeah. that low water like that is just, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I don't. Yeah, I mean, low water in general is going to isolate the fish. There, there's gonna, they're going to be in, isolate in certain areas because they got to come out of holes as that water level drops. And so mm -hmm. the current, I mean, that current still is going to hold more oxygen, oxygenated right. water. And so, um, but as far as how fast that current's moving, think about smallmouth too, though. And they're, they're used to that current. They're strong swimmers right. and they'll still like your crankbaits. You can burn those things oh and they're going to, they're going to catch up to it and they're going to eat it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that it affects their feeding behaviors any, uh, cause they're eating fast or eating hard, right. especially like you say, as, as the temperature drops, but. Yeah. I um, think, like I said, I think when the water gets real low, especially if the, you know, and step definitely in the warmer you know, the summer months for sure mm -hmm. you get, you know, stagnant water. I just, I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I just don't have a lot of faith in stagnant, low, low stagnant water. We got another, we got another one from big dog. I think because of no current, it hurts the oxygen in yeah. the water and yep. the fish become lethargic. I a hundred percent. That's exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Connor, I can hundred percent agree with that. Um, and then we got William Barnes river current is measured in cubic feet. For, yeah, I know, but I can't think, I mean, let's be real here. So, that's a lot for me right now. Uh, but this is a question I can think about, which is, uh, Thomas, is LiveScope irrelevant on the river around here? Absolutely not. LiveScope is never irrelevant if you know what you're doing with it. Um, I fish on Big Slack and Dam 4. I think, no, maybe it's Dam 5. So it's called Four Locks and, and Big Slack are the two big dams on the Upper Potomac. And, and Big Slack is actually pretty big. You can run full throttle for me, which is about 65, and it takes you about five to six minutes to get to the end of it. So it's, it's, not, it's not bad. There you do have enough depth where you can see a lot and snipe mm -hmm. some fish. Now, again, with that said, I've only sniped two fish all summer that have actually helped the bag at all. Mm -hmm. But the thing with live scope is not about being on a snipe. It's about data. When you pan that thing out there, you can tell real quick how much life is going on. And this is for some reason, the one thing I saw with live scope this year with, with when I was fishing with my wife or uh, with, with Cole, my, my, my other partner, if you saw life minnows moving around and there's some small ones up mm -hmm. high in the water column, you knew you're about to get right. Mm -hmm. When you'd scan through there and there was nothing, there was no minnows. There was no little things right. on your screen. It was dead. Mm -hmm. No one was catching stuff. And I pieced that together when I would shine my light through there and I look around and no one else is catching anything. And it was so weird how that was. So that's where I think live scope is so good is the information you can gain. Mm -hmm. And what I also pieced together and I'll, and I'll stop talking and give the floor to everyone else is if you saw someone blast through the river, on a uh, jet ski or someone that went up there that wake would shut them off and i think it's because the area we were fishing was six feet or shallower and with that shallow of water a boat pushing through there just it kind of did something to them so i don't know i just think that's interesting that's pretty interesting yeah, something to that in reference to uh live scope uh, my live scope I, I don't use it that much on uh, well, deeper rivers like if you go down to uh, the Shenandoah and you're fishing down toward the, 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 the dam yeah. where you got deep water, that's fine. But I've just really in like you're fishing three foot of water or mm -hmm. you know, something like that. I just don't get a lot of use of my, uh, uh, uh live forward, scope. you know, live forward scope. Space. But, uh, I tell you what I do use those side imaging. I use oh, it yeah. a whole lot and that's basically, you know, you suddenly you get in some fish and you say, well, what's going on here? You know, and you side image it and you say, Oh gosh, that's just, you know, 
you know, uh, rock bowl size rocks yeah. just all down through there, you know, or whatever, you know, it kind of gives you an idea to how to, you mm-hmm. know, pattern what's going or if the fish are starting to pattern mm-hmm. in some way. But, but I do use, do, do use, uh, my side imaging on like the shallower rivers. And then, like I said, if it's, you know, if I got six or eight foot of water, I can, you know, I'll use, uh, I have used a live scope, but once again, it's just as a tool. By no it's means does it put more fish in the boat mm-hmm. for me. It's nothing more than a tool. I know there's a lot of, a lot of controversy going on mm-hmm. about live scope now. And, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's, once again, I think it's, it's technology. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's like, you know, me as a physician, you know, if I didn't, uh, welcome, technology in medicine i mean mm-hmm. just think where we'd be you know where we'd be mm-hmm. in medicine today mm-hmm. if technology wasn't point. welcomed but once again i'm not you know i still think we gotta there's a lot of people bring out other points uh, that maybe i'm ignorant on about w- what's the long-term effect is this going to be but the way i use my yeah. scope by, by no means is it right is it create it's not a video havoc it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not by any way endangering the mm-hmm. the, the fish uh, because i'm mm-hmm. i'm not loading the boat with them because that's of right. live scope you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah I, mean, you know, that's right. yeah I agree with, agree with what you're saying but to play devil's advocate because i know somebody right now is on the keyboard is in your profession lives are on the risk and as much as probably let's say ray and frank believe it their monday nighter it doesn't matter so i think that's the difference when technology stuff is where people get butthurt about that is it's so expensive i don't if you i don't think people try to make stuff black and white and a lot of times there's gray areas there and it's complex and this is what we talked about the last live stream we talked about live scope is if you told all these big tech firms we're no longer going to take more your more technology or whatever the sponsorship dollar from them will dry up and so you think you're being clever by by doing that but i think you're going to shoot yourself in the foot mm-hmm. and all of a sudden Lawrence, hummingbird garmin there's going to be less money for them so they're going to mm-hmm. spend less on the sponsors and I, I but i don't think a lot of people think that mm-hmm. extra step right. about how everything's entwined with technology mm-hmm. and sponsorship dollars right now right but um bait wise um i just went you're up next right oh no doc is doc is go right. for it i'll kind of follow up on your top water the tiny torpedo uh, top water uh, tea right now I, th- I think my two go-to's uh are the whopper popper and these are the dates um, that are done and basically the the 90 series or the 110 and so you only need two colors bone and black mm-hmm. bone and black you can do whatever really you need here's the black that's the in the 90 series Ooh, wow uh and, i'll take that one right and, there uh, Probably and then show this one up to the camera. This is uh this is actually a, a chopo in a, a kind of a bone color. That's that's in the ninety, I think the ninety series. And these are actually but this uh and I'll tell you what though, the one ten bone is probably my really I've had caught my best fish on that one there. It seems like you might not catch as many, but right. man, I'll tell you what, when you get a fish on that one, it's sure, it's usually good. a really good, a really a good fish. You're right. And um uh, and what I do uh, with that is I upsize that back hook and my mm-hmm. catch ratio is a, it seems to be a little better cool. uh, by upsizing that hook. But um, so now, you know, a lot of people are using these, these type baits, these whopper popper or choppo type baits. So don't forget, do not forget the old buzz bait, you beat me to it. <laughs> the, the buzz bait. I mean, and, and the thing yep. with the buzz bait, uh, I prefer the, Those are got the knocker, the, the knocker yeah. in it. This yeah. one does not have a knocker, <laughs> but you, you know, a buzz bait right now, uh, because of the, the use of the whopper poppers and all is really mm-hmm. good. And like I said, the, and if you get the knocker, the, the buzz bait with the knocker in it definitely has a, a unique sound. And I, I really like that. So, that's kind of, you know, my go-to on just uh, uh, top water is what I've been using recently. I love uh, it. Finding. You're up. And don't be afraid. Uh, I got two other ones. But speaking of plopper, I picked one of those two. Don't be afraid to go big as well. I think mm-hmm. this is the 130. Yep. I think. So don't be afraid to go big. Uh, I've had small, smaller, small mouth in the, in the 12, 14 inch range hit this as well. I've also had four, four pounders hit this. So big mm-hmm. ploppers too. You're done with uh, but I'm going to talk to, we're talking about inline spinners. Uh, was at Egypt then, um, not too long ago. This is working out really um, well. And like Doc was saying, I think there's a lot of wisdom to paying attention to what Mother Nature is telling you and paying attention to Mother Nature. And so um, just happened to be down at the dock and I looked down and just like you were saying, I saw there was some grass and I saw those small little bait fish that were just kind of hanging out around the grass. But the thing the bait fish were doing, they were small, they were tiny. Those bait fish, when they turned over, they were flashing. 
Mm. I saw a flash, mm. right? Mm. I could physically see it. So a Thomas spinner uh, right here is we, – we were turned on by that from a trout fisherman, a lady – uh, that catches a lot of big trout. And she turned us on to this little Thomas spinner. But I want you to think about this again. Small profile, not real big. It's going to give you good flash. And notice on there it says trout, salmon, bass, walleye, panfish, and other game fish. It'll catch everything. Rivers, uh, lakes, ponds. That that little inline spinner is going to catch fish for you. Yeah. And it's and you, you're used to a bigger spinner and all these things. It'll give you the flash in a smaller profile, but you can still catch good bass, especially when they're tight lipped. And the last one to that, along with the inline spinner, is the rooster tail. Very common. Trout fishermen like to use that. Uh, but that is also very effective on bass. It's it's kind of an unorthodox uh, thing for bass fishing, but most people use it for pan, pan fishing or trout. But I will tell you, they will catch bass as well, So especially on the rivers. Don't be afraid to throw those little inline spinners uh, this time of year. Hello. So... Uh... We're going to keep with the top water craze here, and we're going to start with the old uh, Whopper, the Plopper. This is the 130 size. The one thing I like to do with it is I will put a, uh, I guess, I don't, it's it's a treble hook, and you can put a willow leaf blade on it. I think VMC makes it. Mm. I'll put mm. that on there just so when I stop it, it'll have a little bit oh, more yeah, flash. flash. But point. I think the red, I don't know how much I believe in the red hook thing, but I feel like if I put a blade on that, I can force them to hit the front hook, which means I can get them in the back hook. So that's what I'll start doing with this. One thing I like to do with the Chapo, the River to Sea, I don't do this as much with the Buzzbait, but there's something else that's going to come into play here. I'll show you that off. It's your setup. One thing that I'm I'm going to probably give up the goat with is bait casters, I think, get a little bit too much show in freshwater. And they're always told that a spinning reel outfit, it's its a fairy wand. It's its a little weird to have one. Mm -hmm. It makes you not a man if, if you're not throwing a bait caster. And it's funny because if you go into salt water, they'll give you a pilcher and say, flip it under that dock, catch 30 pound snook. And it's, it's spinning reel. You want to go catch an albacore? It's spinning reel. Spinning tackle gives you some really unique, really unique abilities. And the one thing I think that really helps nowadays, especially with angling pressure, is castability. So I didn't bring my That's setup. Important. But what I will use with my Whopper Plopper is I'm going to use 30 pound braid, straight braid, mm -hmm. and I'm going with a four to 500 series spinning reel. And then I'm going with a basically an inshore rod. Mm -hmm. When I use this with a, let's say a lipless bait, which I use a lot with this setup or this, I can throw it between the 50 yard line to the end zone easily without a problem. I truly believe, especially in tidal fisheries, if I can get separation between me and the fish, when you're dealing with six feet or shallower of water, you're going to get one or two more bites okay. with this yeah. setup here. You completely unlock a casting distance that is it's ungodly. And when mm. you throw something like this, you can bomb that sucker you, with this higher diameter. And we guys talk about this is the bigger the spool. Not only do you get more casting distance as the line unravels, but you also, I think this is more, it says it's like a four gear ratio, but when you completely spool this up with braid, it acts more closer to a seven because of how big this thing is. So you're able to keep up with those fish okay. completely. This I use for something else, not just the whopper plopper. I will use this for my bigger frogs. And I use this, and this is, I'm going to give up the goat here. I'm going to use this with flukes. I use the super fluke, the biggest one they have on a four or five aught. EWG style hook and I'll use the same setup because I can power pull down on a grass flat and I can see that fish way in the back and I can just hit him every single time without a problem. Now, what I like to do is everyone's throwing a frog this time of year. Sometimes the crayfish will become black. Get yourself a black zoom super fluke with that big hook. And what this gives you the ability is when those fish have been pressured by the frog bite so much, they're so used to tracking that thing on the surface. But when it opens up to a hole, it stays there with and you could probably use a Senko, but I like the fluke more with that a little bit heavier hook mm -hmm. is as soon as it gets over that pocket, it drops right into their face mm -hmm. and it's completely weedless. So and with this setup, I can cast it far away from me so they don't feel my pressure there. My electronics are turned off. I'm going to work it to the hole and I'll let it drop in. Mm -hmm. I can give it two twitches and then I can keep it going. For some reason, I just feel like I pick up a couple more bites with this. And again, with this whole setup, guys, I get you probably don't have the winching power of the bait caster but I can get separation between me and the fish. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important. I that's will take good. this same setup. And if you want to learn how to skip a mag draft, dude, this thing is legit. Mm -hmm. I can wow. take this thing and I never birds nest with this, but I can just right back up in there and I can engage it. And this rod 
if you can pull a shark in at Virginia Beach with this, you can handle a three pound bass. But again, people don't do it. And that's it's good, good application. That's, that's good. That's good, good stuff. Tip. Yeah. Very good yeah. tip. So, now, how much, uh, how much uh, uh, far as the braid, how much do you end up putting on there? hundred? I mean, because you're able to cast that far, how much do you end up putting on? I go, so if you guys can do it, go with the biggest, the, the thousand yard spools of Power Pro is usually what I will go with. Not the super expensive stuff because you're going to use a lot of braid. Mm -hmm. I can easily clear a 300 yard spool in that thing. Well, do, you, um, do you not put backing? And, on and that's what I say. What you can do though, is you can take old cheap monofilament as backing, reel that in there a little bit yeah. until it's like halfway full and then put yeah. more braid on there as well. Yards, yeah, I would go a little bit more because you can do such crazy bomb cast. And if you lose some there, get snagged. That's a lot of line yeah. that's out there. So go a little bit more with that. Um, but yeah, to your point, you're going to save a little bit more on braid with that. The rod guys is not as important. A medium heavy rod will be fine for the top water application. If you're going to skip a mag draft, you need that heavier rod because that little rod, if you try to really just gear back to skip it, it will snap. I've broken two spinning rods doing that. Uh, and then girls would you yeah and then because we got uh, the girls are coming on with their bait segment of the day so would you guys like me back here to do the comment section or you guys got it okay cool i i will stay here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stand up for five seconds while you guys get stuff moving out here so we have some more baits coming this way I'm going to try to get caught up on everything here. We got, uh, we got, we got crappy Kev. Uh, I use a 1000 size Shimano reel for crappie. That's a fantastic size as well. And then guys, yeah. So the call, we will have another call in show back, uh, at my studio tomorrow, uh, next Monday, we'll have another call in show, a normal one. Like we did with the live, the live scope show. That one will work without a problem. The setup I have is perfect for one person. It's just an issue when I try to branch out to have multiple people. I think that's where the issue is kind of is, is kind of being created right now. But again, the next live show from Jake's Bait and Tackle will be the last Monday of October. So the next live show at Jake's Bait and Tackle will be the last Monday in October. All Patreon supporters are allowed to come in here and shop. We're going to start with them, and then we're going to open up to them. We're going to keep a limit on how many people are allowed here so we don't have 200. Um I believe we talked about that we're only going to allow 10 at first and then we'll branch out from there just to see because we don't want this to be we want it to be an intimate setting and not almost like an amphitheater. Uh, I think we got our we got our people here right now. Sweet. So. All right, perfect. So what I am going to do, guys, is I'm going to step out of here real quick. You're leaving us? Just because I would like to use the restroom. So, but yeah, so you guys can get started. So there you go. Nobody's going to want to talk to us anyway. No. Oh, they're going to want to talk. Trust me. <laughs> they're going to talk. If anybody has right questions on what it's like to be Tom's co-angler, I would be happy to answer any and all questions. Um, so Tom told me to just run around the store and basically pick out what um, I would fish with for the fall season. And considering I just purchased a new reel, which is like the color of a unicorn, unicorn. basically, mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted everything to match and um, it's going to look like a unicorn. So I found, hold on, hold on. I found this one, the sleeper gale. And I don't know that if it's a, if it's a good bait to fish with over the fall or not, but the sleeper gills are good for colder weather, actually. You actually are very smart. Was it? Yes, because they have the dark sleeper, yes. which is a bit little smaller version of that. But what I was told when I bought those was the sleeper gale is more for colder weather. So you're right on that. Perfect. See, she's smarter than we give her credit for. Okay, so you're next. Oh, I'm next. We're supposed oh. to go back and forth. So I am doing more of uh, what we got new in. Um, my bucket's huge, y'all. <laughs> yeah, um, so we're going to start with um, some of the stuff you see. Carly is my favorite person because she does all our TikToks. But um, and the funny thing is our camera is so far away. I know. I feel like we should, It's hard. It's hard. We're, I'm going to move it closer because they're not here to micromanage. We can do whatever we want. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you look like you're off roading. All right, there you go. That's better. <laughs> All right. You got a pretty real. Yes, she did. Remember, we got yeah. to see her TikTok about yeah. the pretty real. Okay. So, Mermaid. I'm going with yes. um, her here. So, I bought some call shads. I bought a bunch of call shads, but the only ones they sent us so far are the saltwater call shads. But the cool thing about um, my rep told me, you know what, get the col col shatter, the saltwater ones because the colors are great. I mean, mermaid, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, cold mm -hmm. beer, 
cold beer. That's a good name. Um, this one is like Silver Flash. I mean, this is just your white. So if you're really wanting to get um, a cold shad right now, I do have salt waters in two different sizes. But these are great colors. So that's what he told me to get. Super duper. But mermaid. We're oh, going yeah. with a Halloween theme. Yes. Yes. Is it my turn? Yeah. All right. So then as I was going down the aisle, I was like, wait a minute. We're coming into October. It's my favorite time of year. Halloween. Okay. Let's get spooky. So I saw CT spinnerbaits. <laughs> and this one is... It has like little splatters of red. It made me think of like blood. So I was thinking Friday the 13th. Jason, right? Okay. So um, so we're going to go with all the CT spinner baits that I found. This one is orange and kind of like like a dark green color. It's bluegill. It's, it's okay. That's fine. It's bluegill. It's fine. All right. So I thought pumpkin. All right. And then the very last one that I found okay. was um, a buzz A buzzbeat. And it's black. Oh, you can't really see it. Oh. Hold on. Oh, over here. Over there. Spider. There you go. It's oh, all black. But you can't see it all. <laughs> there, there you it go. Is. All right. All right. Black Halloween. Yay. The cool thing about Chris's stuff, he's, he hand pours the lead. He ties the skirts. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, he does use collars. So a lot of people will ask about that. But he does use collars. Chris so. is awesome. Great guy. Um, I'm next. So more Berkeley because uh, what is the hardest thing to learn about fishing? You know, that's actually a good question. I think it's the hardest thing to learn about. Well, fishing. For me, um, interestingly enough, everybody asks me if I fish and I don't, I know that's blasphemous for you guys. Um, but um, the good news is for you guys, I say that if I did fish, I would have a preconceived notion of what I should use, buy for you. Um, but now I don't. So I just go around and buy what you guys want. Um, from what I hear is like the time of the year, like all this stuff, like we always say all this stuff in here works sometime, some mm -hmm. time of year somewhere, but you just got to find the right time to use it. I think that's the hardest part about fishing is like all these things you can use and you know how to rig it. But the point is you got to learn when to use it. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And then also just like being patient, which I'm not a very patient <laughs> person. Yeah. So you just have to like Give yourself patience and grace. And you're not going to be good at it. Right you're away. not going to be good at it right away at all. <laughs> and <laughs> um, Tommy awesome. asked if we're getting baptized yeah. or if we're going fishing. Um, mm -hmm. Curtis Cole said, you got the pretty reel. Yes, I cannot wait to show you on the next she TikTok. Bought it I bought it today. Yeah. It's here. <laughs> um, more Berkeley because like I said, Carly does these TikToks. So you have seen these, but they came out with the champ minnow. It's now, well, they've had the champ minnow. It was bigger. So they downsized it because the gulp minnow, like the guys already talked about this, the gulp minnow. Um, uh, yeah. yeah right. Fishing tournament between me and Jared. <laughs> that would be awesome, actually. Um, so <laughs> the gulp minnow, they have the two and a half inch with some new um, colors. And then, so they brought out the champ minnow, which they have these bigger. They just made it the two and a half inch size. Um this one I picked Daniel's pick because it's the color is called Daniel's pick. And if it's <laughs> called named after somebody, it's gotta be good. Um, Halloween perch oh, and smelt. Like, you know, everybody needs smelt, you know, smelt. Yeah. Smelt. Cause that's bait fish. Ah, that's your okay, basic got it. bait Curtis fish. Curtis Cole. Okay. Say this again. Now that I got my own well, I already, already said it. About it. True. But, so anyway, uh, <laughs> you got, Oh, you got the pretty real. Just Rainbow make sure trout. everyone that's um, new color watching on YouTube gets that. So, so the next one here is from Thomas. Much better. Oh, we moved the camera. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, yeah. Brandon Salise, uh, what was the hardest thing to learn about fishing? You guys already answered answer that, that, correct? That. Uh, the next one was uh, Jen, uh, fishing tournament between you and Jared. Make Did it you happen. hear that, Jared? So that was, that was actually it was actually pretty funny, though. We went to Smith Mountain Lake during COVID because our family was together oh, anyway. So we just went on vacation together. Uh -huh. And um, I went fishing with them one day. Um, Jared handed me a bait caster and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't catch anything, but I'm also late. I, I like to sleep. So <laughs> I wouldn't get up. He was always gone at the crack of dawn and back. And then, so he came back and got me and dad and went back out. Um, but yeah, I only bird nested a couple times. I didn't do too bad. All right, Carly, you're up. All right. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if it's a good one for the fall or not, but the Tiger Creek it goes along with the VFS Guys, thing. we have 19 likes on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, please, we are one away from 20 likes. I promise I will 20 feed... 20 is 20 is better than 19. Good point. So, I promise I will feed my wife dinner tonight if we get up to 20 likes. 
I'm so hungry. <laughs> so this one looks like a cute little bumblebee, and honestly, I just picked it up because it's cute. <laughs> but somebody it's, was talking about the griffin, though. But and it's tiger crankbaits. It is hand it's, painted. It's called a griffin. Well, it so that is a blank. That's the Mega Bass Griffin, okay. and they just painted it. It's very cute. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's I love it. Your turn. Um, going with crankbaits. So again, new. Berkeley brought out, um, it's called the dime. They've all been talking about these. Um, they were talking about it at ICAST. So I got a bunch of different colors in. I got the four, the six and the 10. This is their, um, Rapala, Rapala DT, you know, so that's their, what their takes up. Hmm. Got 21 likes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I get dinner. <laughs> um, yeah. So different depths, that kind of thing. So this is their run on that. Um, pros are really talking big about this. They were really pushing it at ICAST. They, uh, so I got it in. So I did my um, new stuff order from Berkeley. Woohoo. Oh. All right. So um, I really like frogs and I thought it was cute. <laughs> And then Tom said it was actually a good one to fish for fall for some reason. Actually, I just learned why by listening to the show like 20 minutes ago. Tom mentioned that the crayfish end up going darker over the fall winter time. And uh, apparently um, this will catch them. What is this? It's a it's a lunker hunt, lunker hunt. Lunker frog. Lunker frog. For $9.49. And also, guys, this uh, part of the segment is brought to you by Willie's Moonshine, I believe it is. Oh, that's shoot. It's been an hour and a half. That's gone. Yeah, that's faded away. Oh. Uh, and it's. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I can't have to All right. For every comment down below, one of them will take a shot. Oh, shoot. For okay. every new comment, they will take a shot. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, sorry. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, okay. So more stuff. Six cents. Ugh, I'm seeing a theme here. It's pretty. See, we're winning. Yes. A comment. Here. Uh, oh no. I'm seeing the a theme here. It's um, pretty. Yes, exactly. Oh, That's shot, the shot, point. Take a shot. Take a shot. Girl. <sighs> yes. Okay. Um, all right. So I got some new six cents stuff. For a while, we've had the um, the whale. Um, here, here, sure these up to the camera. And the flush. I've had those in for a little bit. That's not what um, we're talking about right now. Oh. They're so delayed. Good God. I mean, it's working. We're doing fine. But thank you. Um, so <laughs> we've had the flush and um, the whale. The, I have a couple of different colors of those. So they came in the swim baits from Six Cents. And to go with those, uh, I got. They like little whales. Yeah. They have little, little like, fins on them. Oh, my God. What are they supposed to catch? Fish. But what kind? <laughs> Shit, you're in a bait shop. Yeah. <laughs> What um, kind of fish are the they're whales big, supposed so to catch? They're big, so I would assume a large mouth. But anyway, uh, so to go along with those, we have the divine spinnerbait, uh, the underspin. I'm sorry. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the divine underspin. That one's the weedless. That's the axle underspin. It's supposed to make it weedless. I guess the hook shape. Um, yes, actually, it is the hook shape. Um, a couple different colors, a couple different sizes. Um, these have been um, asked to brought like in. So those will go with the flush and the whale. That looks Halloweeny. That is the bluegill. You like that bluegill color? I really do. Mm -hmm. Why do you like that bluegill color? I don't know. It just it's, it's the orange. Yeah, it's the orange red combination with a little bit of yellow. It's a nature color scheme. It's it's good. It's fall. It screams fall. It does. Autumn. All right. Um, is it my turn? turn? All right. Uh, so this one I got. This one is by Bent Rod Fishing. What is this called? Uh, this is his square bill. It's just it's a square, square bill. But I thought it looked badass. It's so funny. I didn't go cute, but I just thought, hey, that looks like Darth Maul from Star Wars. And I've seen a lot of people dress up as Darth Maul from Halloween. So I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and so it's funny you say that because he has a lot of crazy colors. He does. I've pulled out these because yes. um, that is his plopper. I think he calls them. I Big think Doc splasha. liked that one. Who yeah. pulled that one out? Um, did. Tommy did. Yeah. No, I didn't. Anyway, so uh, Daniel Charles, he's a local guy. He paints these. Um, and he actually has one called God of Thunder. That means always makes me laugh. But we do have a promo going on with him right now. So if you buy the right bent rod lure um 
you win this that he painted, but it has to be the right one. I've predetermined it ahead of time. So you have to buy one. And if you get the right one, um, I will give you that belly belly shad. So just here we go. Here come we go. in go. and buy them all. I got another shot right here. Oh, uh, I already took a sip. Brew tank. Oh. Brew tank at Smith Mountain now. Holy hell. This ain't the Potomac getting a trip with Billy next year. Oh, thank yes. you so much. That, yeah, that, went well. that, that, that Billy Coles episode went extremely well. We want to thank you guys so much for that. And again, if you guys haven't, and I just want to say this, if you guys go to my Patreon, you can see my five-year plan. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away one free fishing trip per month to help support all the guides that come on the show. So Billy Coles, Travis Eaton, Jeff Green, just to give them a little bit of support because all these guides, without them, they're the ones that are on the water 24-7 that really make any of this possible because they're the ones that give us updates on not only the river health, but what they're biting as well. And so I'll get off my high horse. We'll get to this last question. And I'll give the mic back. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean... She ain't wrong. Bluegill is good. Okay. I just love the the sarcasm in that comment. I read really, like, well, she ain't wrong, it's but not sarcasm. He it's supports me. Thank you. Yes. All right. I think it's my turn. Yeah, I think so. All right. So literally, I don't know when is going to be a good time to use this ripple cicada, but um, <laughs> it's hella cute. And I, it actually made me think of Mothman. You oh know, God. like. I was speed cranking Smith today. Fun. He's so cute. When do I fish that? Shot. Um, Take a shot. Ugh, yeah. You, wait, wait, you give it to Jenny next, too. I gotta uh, you guys is up. it empty? Yeah. It's yeah. empty. Carly, just click, uh, Carly, just click uh, that. Oh, yeah. That's over there. Okay, but I want to know when do I fish this? So I would no, imagine when the cicadas are out there. So, like, remember, match the hatch thing. So, cicadas I are I saw a bunch gone. of cicadas at are Virginia still... Beach over the weekend. Really? Yeah. They were all over the place. I love how you're getting more comments now because I'm making women take shots on camera. Actually, never mind. This makes sense. Yeah, it does make um, sense. Asking questions. Um, right, here we go. Next. That was what I would say about the. Um, it's support. Anything that gets the wives on the boat with us. Oh, yeah. Tommy, see, he, he gets it. Like, but do you want the wives on the boat with you? Thank I feel you. Like there's a oh, he filled it up. <laughs> no, he didn't. But the question is, do you actually want the wives on the boat with you or not? Oh, you did. That hurts. Actually won, so. Yeah. First won. lure to catch anything at Lake Frederick wins hands down. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Is that a question or a statement? I think that's a contest. Mm -hmm. That would be a really good video. It's, yeah. Okay. All right. So my turn, right? Yeah. It's um, your turn. Still doing more six cents. Um, I was showing these to Carly earlier today. I had to get um, instructions on how to use it. Somebody asked me that it's a treble head. The cool thing about it is if you show the back of it it tells you how to use it so you basically line through you and then you can add your treble and you can put it in the back of any swim bait to make it um bring lunch and snacks <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty sexist i think i'm just kidding oh Gre uh, yeah, yeah greg yeah, you, you don't count like, I, you know what you're not honestly wrong. i won't show so anyway up so the treble head that was asked I, somebody asked me to bring that in there i thought it was pretty cool you turn any <laughs> swim bait into with the treble you can rig it with the treble yep um, yeah. And, uh, should I keep going? Cause I yeah, have keep more going. than you. Um, so, well, that one, you don't want to do that one. Yeah. More six cents. <laughs> so they were talking about the tube earlier, talking about it being anytime, anywhere, best time. Uh, the new, the crew, it's not new. This one's called Millicent. No, that's Gobi. Um, it is like a crawfish tube. I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, and this one's a red one called fire crawl. Um, it's a crew and a crew. It's a tube and a crawfish together. <laughs> it's a crew. Hence the crew. Um, people were asking about those. And then the newest thing people were bugging me about. Um, I made a TikTok on that one. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. Um, they're asking about was this juggle minnow. I've been told that the action on these things is spot on. They're good for live scope. Oh, Jenny's got to take a shot. He's got to one. Oh. I will take that challenge. Oh, he that talked was that. That was a while ago. There's like six, so we're giving you less mm -mm. shots. So. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> so those are the crubs. And then the juggle mail. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, guys, if Life's you don't good. know, if you're just tuning in, because we just had a big fluctuation of more people, uh, for every question <laughs> that's asked, uh, the ladies have to take a shot tonight. Is it my turn? Yes, it is your turn. Okay. So we're going to go back to um, me picking out baits that match the color of my rod and reel. And I chose Jackal. Ooh, the Mikey. Mikey's one of Jared's favorites, too. Hold on. Shot, shot, shot. Shoot. Yeah, your turn. Crappy. 
Uh, right. Crappy Kev, uh, my wife reads when she, she gets, gets on, on the boat. boat. Nice. That's not a bad deal. My mom would do that. Like, yeah, I, I, especially if I stay outside. Yeah. I'd be happy if I just hang out on the water. Oh, is he Doc's going to buy a crew? Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. All right. So the okay. top of that bait matches the reel that I just purchased. And then Tommy says that it's got to have, have some chrome on it for the fall time. So I thought that was perfect combination for me. All righty, folks. The rest of this show is going to be continuing on Patreon for our Patreon subscribers. If you're not a Patreon member yet, please click on the link down below and please join up. We would really appreciate your support. Otherwise, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about today, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.